I'm Charlton Heston. Welcome back to AMC's Planet of the Apes 30th Anniversary Marathon. We're doing the entire series, and we are now back to the original film that started it all. When producer Arthur Jacobs first started pitching Planet of the Apes to different studios, everyone said the same thing. Absolutely no! Get out of here! But Dick Zanuck, the head of 20th Century Fox, said, maybe. Clearly, the challenge was to persuade audiences to believe these were apes, not actors dressed up in monkey suits. So we planned a special makeup test to, to show the 20th Century Fox board back east. If no one on that board laughed, we had a chance. Zanuck put up $50,000, that's uh, equal to about a million now, and hired makeup expert John Chambers to develop uh, plausible apes. We shot a test scene and sent it to the Fox directors in New York, and nobody laughed. Chambers had hit a home run. Dick Zanuck gave us a go. And now I'm proud to present the 30th anniversary, fully restored version of the original Planet of the Apes. In the middle of AMC's Planet of the Apes 30th anniversary marathon, stay with us all afternoon and evening as we continue to show all five of the eight movies. Hello, I'm Charlton Heston, and this is American Movie Classics Planet of the Apes 30th Anniversary Marathon. We've just finished airing the five films in the series, so it's only fitting that we now present an all-new special, Behind the Planet of the Apes. It's a fascinating look behind the scenes of all the eight movies. You're about to find out how a French novel called Monkey Planet turned into a cultural and cinematic phenomenon. Rare footage, interviews, home movies, it's all here in a special produced by AMC just for this festival. Join me as we go for the first time behind the Planet of the Apes. I'm Charlton Heston. Welcome back to AMC's Planet of the Apes 30th Anniversary Marathon. We'll be showing all five of the Apes movies, and I'd like to introduce the one that started it all. Planet of the Apes was a fascinating film to work on, with actors like Roddy McDowell and Kim Hunter giving superb performances as chimpanzees, and the gifted Frank Schaffner as director. Commander Taylor was a fascinating man to play, a cynical misanthrope, so disenchanted with his fellow man that He's exiled himself from Earth. So when his spaceship crashes into a planet where apes rule, Taylor finds himself, ironically, the sole defender of the human species. It was, in fact, one of my most interesting roles out of more than 70 works so far. And now, I am proud to present the 30th anniversary fully restored version of the original Planet of the Apes. I'm Charlton Heston. Welcome back to AMC's Planet of the Apes 30th Anniversary Marathon. Many weeks after the original Planet of the Apes opened, it was still filling theaters and toy stores, too. Ape masks and action figures, board games, comic books. I got a phone call from Dick Zanuck. Chuck, he said, you have no idea how much money this film is making. It may turn out to be one of the most profitable movies Fox has ever made. It did, too, at a time when movie tickets were about two fifty dollars a head. <laughs> well, that's great, I said. My accountants will be delighted. I'm delighted. Uh, the point is, Dick went on, we have to make a sequel, and I can't make it if you're not in it. Oh, come on, Dick. They haven't made sequels since the Andy Hardy series. Then I thought a minute. On the other hand, you stepped up when no one else would touch this movie. I, I guess I owe you one. I'll do your sequel free if you kill me off in the first scene. Hmm? Uh, how's this? You disappear in the first scene and die in the end. And that's what we did. I thought I'd eliminate any more sequels by having Taylor fall in the nuclear button and blow up the world. But that just eliminated my part. They made uh, four sequels in all. You know what? I haven't seen one of them until now. 
Everyone says the original Apes is the best of them all, but I look forward to the sequels, beginning with Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Returning from the original are Kim Hunter as Zira and Morris Evans as Zaius. But that's not Roddy McDowell playing Cornelius. He was directing a film at the time, and this is the only ape movie he wasn't a part of. It's actually English actor David Watson. This first sequel is known for introducing the underground mutant society. And thanks to an expert job by art director William Grieber, get ready to experience a version of New York City that you've never seen before in Beneath the Planet of the Apes.